Thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Everyone loves fire. Lighting it, putting it out, touching it with your bare hands, it's all good and fun, until it isn't. As it turns out, fire spreads pretty quickly, and if it spreads enough, you have to call a bunch of people over to your house to help you put it out. But why? How did this whole fire putting out business even begin in the first place? Well, that's a very interesting question, and I'm so glad three seconds ago I asked myself it. Not because I currently have any answers, but because I'm about to. Let's go back to England in the year 1721, and ignore pretty much everything else about the time period except for this wagon. This is the first patented fire engine, and though it lacks both an engine and fire, it does feature a rather large lever. This lever, which required the strength of two men to operate, was used to pressurize the wagon's 170-gallon tank, allowing water to be shot out of a hose at around 100 gallons per minute. These wagons, which were often referred to as fire pumps, could be manipulated and moved by hand easily with the tank empty, requiring a small crew of men to move when full. Although a simple design, the first fire engine was wildly successful at the time, and its inventor, a man named Richard Newsom, profited immensely from patenting the design. After another patent for a similar, slightly improved wagon in 1725, he single-handedly dominated the English fire pump market simply because there weren't many competitors. As a small side note before we move on, Fire pumps were not only a western amenity, and there are various models of fire pumps from East Asia around this time period, though I lack the data to definitively say whether or not these were independently invented. Another thing I lack the data to definitively say is whether or not you're going to pay attention to a quick word from this video's sponsor, Surfshark. As a college student who's allegedly out and about most of the day, and who typically writes these videos connected to public Wi-Fi, having a solid VPN to rely on is an absolute necessity, which is why I use Surfshark. If you're unfamiliar with what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network, and allows you to keep your online identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet, keeping your personal data out of the hands of both cyber criminals and big corporations alike. Free public Wi-Fi can be a haven for hackers, which is why it's so important to secure your personal data, and use Surfshark's clean web feature which blocks ads, malware, trackers, and phishing attempts. Surfshark VPN also allows for you to swap the location of any device via altering the IP address, which can help you get around geographically blocked websites. For example, if the German version of Netflix has a movie that you really like to watch but it's unavailable in your home country, switch your location to Germany and you'll be able to get around it. They have over 3,200 servers in more than 100 countries around the globe, and considering that you can use Surfshark on an unlimited number of devices, there are plenty of options for everyone. Surfshark themselves do not monitor, track, or store your online activity, so you can remain completely in control of your own data. Click the first link in the description below and use code Yukon to get 83% off and 3 extra months for free of Surfshark. Surfshark offers a 30-day money-back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. As we head into the 19th century, some major changes are well underway in the world of fire engines. Ladders, which used to be carried by hand, now found themselves fastened to wagons, most of which ballooned in size to accommodate larger water tanks. Fire crews also grew larger, as increased manpower was required to operate larger pumps. The 1800s brought the invention of steam power to the public, which was used to create the first self-propelled fire engine in 1841 in New York. Unfortunately for the inventor, firefighters sabotaged the machine and destroyed it, fearing their jobs were at stake, though other iterations of steam-powered fire engines popped up across the US and Europe as the century progressed. Prior to this point, water had been collected in one of two ways, either by hand, which took ample time and effort, or by pumping mechanism. While the first fire engine used a pump to pressurize the tank, water had to be collected by hand, but clever usage of pre-existing urban cisterns changed this. During the 1800s, many cities used a series of wooden pipes connected to a cistern which ran at street level or slightly below. These pumps would intermittently have large plugs called fire plugs, which could be removed by hand and allowed fire engines access to a large supply of water. Once steam power came into the picture, none of the pumping or collecting had to be done by hand anymore, and the usage of water pipe systems skyrocketed across the western world. Fire hydrants, which you can see anywhere in the world today, have their origins in these wooden cistern systems. The next real change to the world of fire engines came along with the invention of, you guessed it, the gas engine. Most historians will say that the invention of the gas engine was, quote, pretty cool and lots of fun, but they often overlook how long it took someone to stick one on a fire wagon. The first official fire truck was invented in 1905 in Springfield, Massachusetts by the Knox Automobile Company, which was known at the time for producing farm tractors and assorted other trucks. 
Though successful, early firetruck designs weren't as accommodating to their crews as modern-day engines are. Firefighters would have to hang on to the outside of the truck, standing, and rarely sitting, on the sides and the rear of the vehicle because there weren't enough seats in the cockpit, which lacked any roofing or doors so the entire crew would be exposed to the elements. Outside of uncomfortability, this arrangement was incredibly dangerous, and there are plenty of recorded cases of firefighters falling off of trucks during this period, mostly due to sharp turns or bumps in the road. However, these trucks were fast, much faster than any other fire engine in the past, which led to a very quick adoption across the United States, or at least in districts with a loose budget. Around this time, ladder trucks splashed onto the scene as well, and though the original design was invented in 1868, they didn't become practical to produce until the early 1900s. These trucks differentiated themselves from traditional fire engines by featuring an attached ladder, which could be raised or lowered when the vehicle was in motion, allowing for trucks to pull up to the scene of a fire with the ladder already extended. Throughout the 1900s, fire trucks, for the most part, improved with general truck standards and gained features such as a roof, doors, increased cabin seating, and truck safety features. Water tanks continued to grow and the pumps themselves improved too, incrementally every year. Though that's about the most I can say for them, as there's not much information available. So if you have any additional info, feel free to let everyone know in the comments below. Today, there are as many fire truck variations in operation as there are grains of sand in this picture. Which is to say, there are quite a lot of them, and I'm not going to bother counting. What I can do, though, is cover the most common and interesting types you might see going about your day. There are, of course, still conventional fire trucks, which really only feature a water pump and other minor features with no ladder. A lot of the time, these are used by smaller departments, emergency medical response, or as additional support for more complex vehicles, such as Aerial Apparatus Fire Trucks, which are unique for their aerial apparatus, which you can see right there. The term Aerial Apparatus covers a wide variety of different fire trucks, all of which feature some kind of apparatus that is aerial, if you can believe that. Sometimes this apparatus is an extendable boom attached to a hose which can spray water from the end, used to reach certain vantage points or angles to help with fire suppression. Other times, the apparatus could be a ladder, such as in turntable ladder trucks. Like the previously mentioned ladder trucks, these vehicles have a movable ladder, which can be extended or retracted remotely. But turntables differ from basic ladder trucks as the ladder has a greater range of motion, able to swivel, rise, and fall as well. These ladders will sometimes have a bucket on the end for a firefighter to stand in, either to help rescue people from precarious situations or spray them with water, but I'll get into this a little more in a bit. Tiller trucks are by far my favorite iteration of fire truck because, well, it looks like a semi-fire truck. Usually around 50 feet long, these articulated trucks look quite strange as the trailer interlocks with the engine via a fifth wheel mechanism, the same kind you'd see on a traditional semi-truck. These trucks can usually accommodate a larger crew, all of which sit up front with the exception of the tiller driver, who is seated all the way in the back. The tiller driver is responsible for controlling the trailer via a wheel, as the furthest back axle on the trailer is able to be steered. The existence of the tiller driver is what makes these vehicles so effective, as they dwarf most other fire engines with only a slight loss to agility. In larger cities, tillers are preferred as they're able to snake through tight streets or traffic without a problem. Often tiller drivers will be responsible for the manipulation of the truck's aerial apparatus as well, which is usually a turntable ladder, further reducing the time it takes to prepare for a fire. Platform trucks are differentiated by the presence of a work platform, also known as a bucket, which is featured at the end of a ladder or other aerial apparatus. Sometimes these trucks will also have anchors, which help them to secure themselves when the ladder is extended. As you've probably noticed by now, many trucks fit into multiple categories, and this crossover is most apparent when it comes to platform and ladder trucks, which are almost one and the same with the exception of those few small differences. Wildland fire trucks, also known as brush fire trucks, are specifically used for off-road or rural applications. These are hardy, small vehicles engineered to crawl over rough terrain to extinguish wildfires in hard-to-reach locations. Some of these trucks are able to spray water while driving, something most traditional fire engines cannot, which can help a firefighter significantly when facing the unpredictable conditions found in nature. Water tender or water tanker trucks are the simplest of the bunch, used primarily for the transport of water. These trucks are mostly made up of a water tank, which can be filled and brought to the site of a fire if water is in short supply or non-existent. Airport fire trucks, which are also called airport crash tenders, are responsible for handling fire and rescue in regards to both airports and airplanes. These trucks are also built to be hardy, able to go off-road and handle any weather condition. The reason crash tenders are built so tough is their necessity. They're the first line of response to plane crashes, malfunctions, or other dangerous airport hazards. 
Usually, tenders feature water and foam jets which can spray fire suppressant quickly and over long distances, meaning that they can instantly begin working on a fire the moment a plane lands. Now, I guarantee I've missed some interesting type of fire truck or feature, which I apologize for ahead of time, but I hope there's some well-informed people in the comments to fill in the gaps in my knowledge. Anyway, that's about it for today. Thank you for watching, and thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Check them out using the link in the description below. Thanks again, and goodbye.